Hello and welcome to this second tutorial video on basic static graphics in processing. So as the second video it's expected that you'll be reasonably fluent with the commands covered in the first video that are listed on the screen here. You can pause the video if you need to look through those. Alright, let's delete that and get on with this video's program. Okay, so because this pro um, program that we'll be going through is a fair bit longer than the previous one, rather than having you watch me type somewhat inaccurately and slowly, what I've done is I've already written the program and commented all the text, all the code out, and I will progressively uncomment it as if I was writing the program, except it'll be faster and more accurate. So, what we're going to do with this program is draw a window that looks a bit like that. So a basic, very basic um, picture of a couple of flowers in a flower pot, but it's enough to illustrate the tools that we'll be using and show you how you can combine some of these basic shapes into a, a rudimentary scene. So to make our code flexible, what I'm going to do is specify variables for the location of the pot and each of the flower heads, and that means that we can then modify it if we want to slightly tweak the scene. So first thing I'm going to do is declare those variables. So I have an X and a Y location for each of the pot and the two flowers. I then need to give those variables some values. Now one thing to note here is that you can put these into a single line, so rather than declaring a variable first and then um, initialising it with a value, I can do all of that in one line. So I can say int pot X equals 400 and then delete that line there, or in this case I'll just comment it out. Now I can do that with all of them, but you don't want to watch me do that in the video. It behaves the same way, it just becomes a little more efficient for the, for the code. Okay, then we want to set ourselves up a canvas, and hopefully our code doesn't actually do much yet. Let's just run it. Now it is a good practice as you're developing code to run often, as soon as you've got code that you think will, will run without errors, um, then run it and check, because the the quicker you find an error, the fewer errors you have and the easier it is to work out where the error is if you've made fewer edits since the last time you attempted to run your code. Okay, our window here behaves as expected. It displays an 800 pixel wide, 600 pixels tall with a white background. Okay, pressing on. Now we want to draw ourselves a flower pot. So, first thing I'll do is draw the, um, the rectangle of the flower pot, so this rectangle here and I'm going to draw it at the location, the X and the Y location of the flower pot, and I'm going to draw it 200 pixels wide and 150 pixels tall. Let's see how that goes. Uh, okay, so it has, it does appear to have drawn a rectangle of about the right size, having set the colour correctly and given us no outline, but we can see here that of course it's put the top left corner of the rectangle where we actually want the centre to be. So what I'll do now is introduce a new, new tool for us, which is the processing reference. So on the processing website, we can look up and see some pretty good tutorial pages for each of the commands that we, we, want, to use, that we want to use within processing. So you can either go to the reference page linked here, or as I normally do, link up here. Now if you know what the command is that you want, you just want a refresher on how to use it, then just type the command in. Or if you want to do something, in this case I want to be able to have the rectangle centered, um, just type that in, hit enter, and it will do a custom Google search for the site. And it's telling me that this command here called rect mode might relate to my rectangle center. So I'll follow that, and I bring up one of these um, reference pages. So these reference pages are really useful. I'll just show you quickly how to make sense of it. So the first thing it starts with is the, the name of the command. Then it gives you some examples of how it's used. Now in the case of this command, it doesn't actually draw anything on the screen directly. What it does, it, it like, the, um, like the fill and the stroke commands, it just changes how future commands will be enacted. So it shows you, here's using the command itself, the rect mode, and then it does a couple of other lines of code just so you can see something on the screen. And then you'll see the example here of, um, of what happens for these different code samples. That's actually really quite useful, and you can, of course, copy and paste that code into your own and then modify it as you need to. Then there's a full worded description here, and the formal syntax or the formal way that the program, the example uh, command is used, and any explanation of the parameters or the, the information that goes into it. So in this case, it's a fairly simple syntax. You only put one piece of information in, which is the mode, and you've got uh, four options here. So 
corner is the default mode where you do actually specify the top left corner and the width and the height. The mode that we're going to use is called center. Uh, keep in mind if you're in Australia that center is spelled the American way C-E-N-T-E-R and it is capitalized. So what center mode does, you can see the example here and also the description is written in the paragraph down here. So basically what we do is we specify the center location and then a width and a height. So let's just put that command in. There's no point making life hard for ourselves. Let's copy and paste with a semicolon afterwards, of course. And now we can see that our rectangle has relocated to the center. So it's, that's how we can use the processing reference pages to help learn and refresh these, these commands. You will of course start to memorize the ones that you use frequently, but there's no shame at all in looking things up a lot. And you'll find that when you look things up, you'll find new little ways to use commands that you didn't realize the first time you were using them. Okay, so we've got ourselves a pot. Now it's time to put a label on the pot. So we need to change the fill color. So the fill color that was there before is what the pot will be in. So if we don't change it, we won't see any text. So we change it to a, in this case, a light red. Now we can specify, now we could just, I'll just show you what happens if we just draw the text. Okay, so we can see there it's changed the color of the um, font uh, because we've changed the fill color, but it's defaulted to aligning to the left so that you'll see that the pot word starts in the middle of the pot where in fact we want the, um, the whole text to be centered on the pot and we'd like it to be a little bit bigger than that. So what we can do is change the size to start with. So use a new command called text size and that gets a single number which is the number of pixels tall that you want the text to be. So now we get quite a bit larger but we can see the misalignment is now even more obvious. So like the rect mode there is another command called text align where you can specify either just the horizontal alignment with one word or you can put two words in there and get the vertical, the horizontal and vertical alignment um, centered on the, the location you have. Then we put in the command called text which takes in three arguments. There's the string that you want to display, the x location, so how far across, in this case we want it to be at the same spot as the pot and also how far down from the top of the screen it is. So now we should see the pot with the words. Okay, there's the first part of our scene done. Now let's draw ourselves some flower heads. So we want to have no outline for our flower heads. Now you'll see that I had no stroke up here as well. It's quite useful sometimes to explicitly specify these because as you start to modify your program you might decide to rely on no stroke still carrying on from the flower pot and it would work but if you later modify your code and put some extra stuff in here that does in fact have a stroke width, you'll find that your flower heads no longer work correctly. So if you want there to be no stroke with the flower heads, it's worth re-specifying it just before you draw the flower heads, and that way you know that you're going to get no outline. Okay, let's give ourselves a fill color, and um, it's a bit different to the flower pot and the, uh, the text before, and then we'll draw ourselves an ellipse and the ellipse is drawn at flower 1's x location and y location and for now we'll just make that 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall so it should come out as a circle. There we go, we have ourselves a flower head. Okay, and we can do the same thing with the second flower head. Now if we just draw a second flower head at flower 2 location and the same size, we'll get those in the same colour. But of course we want to have different colours so let's change the color before we draw the next ellipse. Now this is making use of the fact that processing or every programming language executes the command, the lines of code in order. So we can say dip the paintbrush in this color, draw an ellipse, change the color, draw an ellipse in the new color. So now we should see, there we go, our flowers are now different colors. Now the last thing we need to do is draw ourselves the stems. Now we don't need to specify locations for the stems as separate variables, we just need to run them from the pot up to each of the flower heads. So here we go. So we want to draw the stems in a fairly bright green, so we'll just change the stroke. Remember the, um, the stems are going to be lines, so we need to change stroke, not fill. And in this case we want to have the line having a thickness, so we're going to have a 10 pixel wide uh, line. 
and then we draw our lines. So the, the lines go from the pot x and y locations to the flower x and y locations. So that's pretty much how the line command works. It just draws a line from an x and y location at the start of the line and the x and y location at the other end of the line. And we can do that for each of the flowers. So each of the flowers, the lines go from the pot location out to the flower location for flowers 1 and flower 2. Ooh. OK, so we can see there we've got all of the parts we want, but it doesn't look quite right because what we really want to do is have at least the pot and probably the flowers drawn on top of the stems. And this is where the, the canvas analogy of processing is really important to keep in mind because once you draw something to that screen, the computer, the, the program has no memory of it being there. The only way to change it is to draw something else over the top of it. So it's, it's like drawing with physical paint on a physical canvas. Uh, once it's there, you can paint over the top of it. So if we want to have the pot happen on top of the stems, then we need to draw it after we've drawn the stems. Luckily that's pretty easy to do. I can just cut and paste these stems and draw them first. So we'll go above the pot and the flowers and draw our stems. So we're still doing the same things, but now we're doing them in a different order. There we go, and now our flower pot with our flowers looks much more like what we want. Now because we've specified these locations as variables, I can decide, actually I'd, I'd rather have this yellow flower here, maybe, maybe a little bit further up and across. So I can just go up here and change, I said I wanted it um, up and across, didn't I? So let's make it say, 200, say 300 pixels across from the side and maybe only 50 pixels down from the top rather than 150. And now you can see that both the flower and its stem have been moved to match it. And I can also do the same thing if I want to move the flower pot across a little bit. So maybe I want to have my flower pot happen at 200 pixels from the side. So instead of being in the middle of the screen, I want it to be offset a little bit. And I can see that the flower pot and the flower and the stems have been adjusted to to set with my new location and that's where using variables can be very useful if we want to start to fine-tune our drawings later on so now you have enough basics of most of the graphics commands to draw a reasonably complex composite picture you just have to remember that the commands are executed in order and go and have fun, run often, debug, and expect that your code won't work most of the time. I cheated by pre-preparing this code, and let me tell you, when I was writing it, the code itself didn't work a lot of the time that I was repairing it. So you didn't see my errors because they make for a very long video, but please trust me that having your code not work first time around is totally normal.